competition first. So we need to go to Google and find out how many megabytes are in a gigabyte to create the partition. Now for most users you would want to create a partition around 30, 40, 50. If you're going to be using it full time then I would recommend creating partition 80, 100 uh, gig depending on how much space you got. Now it's completely up to you but what you need to do is just type in the amount into there and then just copy out the output in megabytes. Now when you've done that what you want to do is go to down here on the start right click and then click this management and you want to right click here and click shrink volume. Now when you've done that what you want to do is actually I'm just going to pull this over for status. Now if you've got a new computer then you would have three or uh, four volumes or three um, partitions. Now the problem with having four partitions is that you cannot have a fifth partition, you only have to have four partitions. So that means you've got to delete one of those partitions. Now the one what I recommend deleting is normally the recovery partition but before you do that I recommend actually backing up that recovery partition and also backing up and imaging your computer so if anything does go wrong then you've got something to fall back on. Now when you've actually removed that partition then you can come back to this and then you can just paste in the amount in megabytes what we've got from Google a minute ago into here and press shrink. And what this will do is create a volume or partition and here it is and that is pretty much it. So in the second I will be zooming over to a different computer and showing you how to create a portable USB bootable Linux drive. So see you in a second. Right, so we need to download, well we need to download Ubuntu and we need to make our bootable USB stick. Now this is quite easy bit, this is lot, this is the one of the most easiest bits of this tutorial. So let's get on with it. So what we need to do is go to Ubuntu website, then go to desktop and then go get Ubuntu now. Select your version, if you've got less than 2 gig of RAM then go for the 32 bit, if you've got more then go for the 64 bit and then just hit download. I've already got a copy of that so I don't need to download it. And then what we want to do is go to Universal USB, just type that into Google and then go for the top one, U Universal USB installer, easy as one, two, three. And just go all the way down to the bottom and hit download. It will take about two seconds to download. And then we just want to go down to our folder. So there's our download folder. So we just want to open this up, so double tap and then hit agree and then we want to hit select the distro, so Ubuntu and then we want to select the ISO, what we've just downloaded from Ubuntu hit OK and open and then we want to select the USB that we want to install it on so make sure that's actually plugged into the computer so select that and do a format and then just hit create. Now I'll just give you a list of instructions that it's going to actually do. So it's going to format it uh, to FAT32, then it's going to create uh, a system, etc. Put a label on it, then install onto install Ubuntu onto G drive. So just hit OK or yes and it will start installing. So that is pretty much it. So I will end the tutorial here and um, see you in a second and uh, yeah, when the next year you will be well watching me install Ubuntu, so see you in a second. Right, so we've got the USB done, we've got the partition done, now we just need to boot to Ubuntu and install it. So this is your mission to do now, what you need to do is Basically find out who made your computer or who made your mo uh, motherboard and then you need to find out how to get into the BIOS and then change the boot order so that it is booting from the USB drive. And when you have done that you can reboot and then you'll get this screen. So when you've done that you need to click on install Ubuntu and then you'll have 
these two options. Now I recommend uh, choosing both of those. It's up to you, completely up to you if you want to do it, but I recommend doing it. And then you just need to click on continue. And when you have clicked on, on continue, you will get a new screen saying uh, how to install Ubuntu. Now, what we'll have is install alongside Ubuntu and something else. So here is the alongside one and here is something else. Now, I've had people come back to me in the past where this has not worked that well. It is a part of Ubuntu, but it's hit and miss really. So I recommend doing it a bit more advanced way and doing something else. So hit continue. And what we'll get is this. Now this is where it gets a little bit complicated, but it is worth it. So click on free space. And now what we want to know is if you've got an SSD or a hard drive. If you've got an SSD, then you do not need a swap area. If you add a swap area to your SSD, it will basically eat into the life of that SSD. So do not use an SSD. Do not use a swap area on your SSD. If you've got a hard drive, then use an SSD. So for the people who've got hard drives, this is how to create a swap area. Oh, did I say SSD a minute ago? If you've got a hard drive, then you need a swap area. Okay? So this is how you do it. I'm getting very tired now. Right, so what you need to do is just type in 2 gig. So that is 2 gig in megabytes. And then you want to go to use as. And you want to go to swap area. And hit OK. Now when that's been created, what both of you people want to do, if you've got an SSD or if you've got a hard drive, you need to create a root drive. And now you want to go to free space and click the plus sign again. And then you want to go down to, no, you don't want that one, you want mount point and you want to go down to forward slash and that means root. And then you want to hit OK. And last but not least, you want to make sure that the hard drive what is selected, the device for bootloader and installation is on the same drive as the Windows 8 bootloader. So you need to make sure that these three letters match the drive that you install, what you're installing on. So you want to make sure the CBA or CBC or CBB or D whatever match the drive letter what's up here or down here or wherever. Okay, that's the important bit. If you don't get that correct, then it will not work. So when you've done that, you want to hit install now. And then it's the road to installation. So you want to select where you're from, hit continue. And then you want to select your keyboard layout, hit continue. And then you want to type in username. So I'm just going to put in test and put in your password. I'm just going to do test again. And then just hit continue. And that is it. So I will see you in a minute. I am going to cut it here and see you when it comes to the point where you need to restart. So see you in a second. Right, so that's the installation complete. Now what you need to do is restart the computer. And when it's restarting, you need to pull out your USB drive or shut down your computer and pull out your USB drive or it will actually boot to the USB again. So when you've done that, I'll see you in a second. Right, so this is the last bit of the tutorial now for say goodbye and farewell. So when you've uh, rebooted the computer, you'll get this window. Now what you need to do is use your arrow keys to go to Ubuntu if you want to, or you can go to Windows 8. But there's a 10 second time limit unless you press one of the arrow keys. If you press it in time, then you can go down or just stay on this page as it is. So when you chose your operating system, you can just press enter and it will boot into that operating system. 
So that is pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe, rate and comment. And um, thank you for watching. If you do have any problems, please comment. And if you do like the tutorial, please rate. Um, it really does help. And um, yes, thank you for watching. Bye.